Hey guys, Average Joe here, and I am back with my second load test video. In the first video, I tested the locking pins. In this video, I'm going to test the 552 series discs, both series one and series two. Um, what I've chosen for this test is a 552 series one disc, a series two disc, a previously glued Series 1 disc. This is one of my old discs. I want to see how a uh, repaired disc performs. One of my machined discs and one of my cast discs. Also, I selected uh, disc 3, which for me is disc B. Uh, so all of these are the disc three when you look at your dumbbells which means it'll have these uh, uh well it's a coincidence but it has three lips on it i did that for fairness so that we're comparing apples to apples as far as these discs now this jig i custom designed i uh, took off the pin jig that you saw on on here in the previous video i mounted this one it consists of a vertical support a horizontal shaft that acts like the dumbbell shaft and a specially designed part that has a radius that matches our discs. So this is going to mount in here like this and it's going to pull on this lip and apply force much like a weight plate inside the dumbbell. So what we're going to do Oh, one other thing I should mention. I put washers here to keep the discs suspended away from the support. I didn't want, I want, there's a gap there deliberately. I didn't want this support to provide any backing against these discs. The reason is on your dumbbell, these are generally, let me put these two together these are uh, not supported on the back side unless you have a weight plate in there, but that's loose. So the only support on these discs is through the center hubs. So that simulates it on this shaft. So what we're going to do is first mount our piece here on the force gauge one sec here there we go so our uh, part is mounted now we're going to place a disc on the shaft we're going to secure that disc. So that the the uh, disc can rotate freely, okay? Let me adjust this so you can see it a little better. We're going to bring the disc up, slide the lip into the part here. So that lip is riding in the groove. Oh, also, I will be testing the center lip on all of the discs. Again, just to be uh, equal across all discs. So this is a series one disc. It is now positioned with the center lip on this part. We go up here, turn on our Mark 10, make sure it is on peak tension PT zeroed come back down here and let's take a look at what happens to this disc when I apply a force to it when it fails no matter how it fails if a piece breaks off if it bends uh, whatever happens this gauge will give us the peak 
measurement of pound force when it failed. So let's apply some force to this. So <laughs> that took almost no force to pop right out as if a weight plate fell out of the dumbbell. So let's take a look at the force. 57.1 pound force is all it took for this to flex enough to come out of the fixture here. Uh, that's, that is almost nothing. But uh, let's now dismount this disc. And mount our next disc, which will be the Series 2. And make sure it rotates. Bring it up into the fixture. Center lip. We're going to zero this out. Come back down here and apply force again. So that was all the force needed to pop this disc, to flex this disc out of this fixture. 160 pound feet, or sorry, pound force of uh, force on this. We're going to pop this out. Take this off. Grab our compromised, previously glued Series 1, mount that on, again center lip, now this one, <laughs> just the light pressure, you can actually see, uh, well maybe you can't see on the camera, uh, but I can see here that because of the crack, this disc is no longer flat. There's actually a curvature this way on the disc, ever so slightly. So this is not even a, a uh, flat disc anymore. Uh, oh, you can actually see it right there. So you see how there's no uh, gap inside here between this and the disc. If I go to the next... Um, lip, you can see the gap in there, down in there. This actually has a curvature to it now that the regular unbroken disc didn't have. But let's test this anyway. So we're going to zero it out. Now remember, this is a glued disc. So, you know, when you glue your part and you think, oh, I glued it, uh, I repaired it, I can reuse it. Uh, well, let's see what that means in reality. So we're going to apply a force and it's almost nothing. You can see how easily that flexes. Eight pound force, that's it. That's all it took to flex this broken disc because it's been compromised already. The fact that we glued it, all that that has done is joined the two pieces back together again. It really didn't, uh, you know, make it as strong as the original disc. So this one failed at 57. This one failed at 160. This one failed at 8. 
Now, none of them, notice, had broken. No pieces came off, but that can happen if the forces are applied in other ways, right? Obviously, because a lot of these break like this. So impact force from dropping it and so forth can actually take chunks of these out. But in this test, all of them flexed. Now, flexing, of course, means what? It means your plates will drop when this thing flexes. The easier it flexes, the easier it is to drop a plate. Now, let's take our, uh, actually, we're going to do our cast one first. So we'll take our cast, slide our cast on there. Tighten that, go like that. Put this up into the gauge. Come up here, zero it out. And let me just move this so you can see a little better. Okay, let's try applying a force here. I've got to come over here. The aluminum takes a lot more force. So I'm going to apply force with my hand on this lever. And, whew, whoa, okay. <laughs> we exceeded the maximum for this gauge. Um, this gauge goes up to, five, it can measure accurately up to 500 pound force. I've now exceeded it. If you go too far beyond the maximum, you actually ruin the load cell for the gauge. Uh, this was the uh, gauge that I could afford. <laughs> it's a almost $2,000 gauge, but it only measures up to 500 uh, pound force. But it didn't do anything, nothing to the disc, no flex. You know, the, the, basically, uh, I could probably pick up a gauge that goes up to 1,000 and still have no flex from this part. But, uh, you know, the, it's moot at this point because this one was flexing at 160, this one at 57, and this one at, at less than 10. And we're now at over 500 with this one. So we're going to unmount this. And mount our... CNC part. Now I fully expect if the cast part exceeded 500, this part will do it no sweat because this is even stronger than the cast part, even though the cast part is plenty strong. So we've got it mounted, freely rotating, bring it up, center lip is on there, zero out our 507. Come back down here and once again I'm going to use my hand on this lever here and apply the force downward on the wow okay secure okay <laughs> once again we've exceeded the pound force of this gauge uh, 524 and it could have kept going you know it's not going to slip off there it's not going to flex your plates not going your weight plate is not going to fall out of your dumbbell when one of these are mounted uh, in a previous video just recently yesterday day before yesterday I talked about the danger of using an OEM dumbbell for uh, goblet squats because of the kind of pressure uh, forces that are put on the perimeter of the disc and uh, that flexing is what is dangerous that allows plates to slip that allows the dumbbell to become unstable uh, by having an, an all metal part you're not going to get that flex especially well in this case you know it's a 60 60 61 aluminum and a383 aluminum parts and you're not going to get that flex. So we went from 
the minimum of eight pound force up to 57 pound force, 160 pound force, 507, actually just over 500, and now over 500 as well here. So, uh, so yeah, that's, um, you know, that is the primary uh, test for these discs that I wanted to do. Uh, you know, for the last couple years when I designed these parts, I can test them in the software and I can test them in the actual dumbbells, which is good. That's the real world test. But I wanted to have data to back it up, to back up the claims and show that, you know, uh, there, there is, um, uh, you know, these are stronger, much stronger than the OEM discs. And, uh, yeah, so I think we've done that here. And in the next video, I will do this with the 1090 discs as well. I'm also thinking of, uh, uh, doing another test. I may do a fourth video where I test all the discs in this orientation and I apply a force on the edge of the disc here at the perimeter and see if I can get it to snap or flex when the force is applied here. So we may do that in a, another video as well. I'd have to take apart this jig and reconfigure it for that test. But uh, so in the next video, I will test the 1090 discs and uh, thank you for watching. If you find my videos helpful, I hope you'll subscribe. And uh, I will see you all in the next video.